What's up everyone, it's your boy Norn Rad 89 here, bringing you another video today to continue the Scooby-Doo review series on to Scooby-Doo and Scrappy-Doo from 1979. Today you're going to hear my thoughts on this TV show, and this is the fourth incarnation of the Scooby-Doo series, so let's get into this. Roll it! Scooby-Doo and Scrappy-Doo premiered in September of 1979. This show ran for one season, 16 episodes, and this was actually the, also on ABC, that station. And this was the first introduction of Scrappy-Doo, our new character. And Scrappy-Doo was voiced by Lenny Winrip. And yeah, this first show in the first season, I think Scrappy-Doo was fine. The 16 episodes and what they did... To still have the same vibe and atmosphere of Scooby-Doo, Where Are You? But Hanna-Barbera would really force the character on us over the next three seasons, which are different incarnations of the Scooby-Doo show. And they would add in Yabba Dabba Doo. They would also eliminate and take out Velma and Fred and Daphne, who are key members of the crew. And when you take them out and you just have Scooby and Shaggy and Scrappy-Doo. It's a different, you know, dynamic completely, just having those three characters. So taking out the other crew was definitely like a hindrance to the show. But in terms of this first season, we still had Velma in there. We still had Fred, we still had Daphne and Scooby, Shaggy. We just added Scrappy-Doo, who is the nephew to Scooby-Doo. And I think that's like a good thing was why this first season still has a good vibe to it. And Scrappy-Doo is mainly thrown in there because the formula for Scooby-Doo was kind of getting worn out and they felt like, Hanna-Barbera felt like they needed a new spark. They needed something else to throw into the, you know, the mix. And Scrappy-Doo, as you can tell too with the writing, as the season progresses, you can see how Velma, Fred, and Daphne were kind of taking a back seat and all the antics, it got, it got taken up to 11, you know what I mean? In terms of a more, Three Stooges type slapsticky comedy thing going on with Shaggy, Scooby, and Scrappy Doo because they had this certain dynamic where, you know, Scooby Doo and Shaggy are the scaredy cats, and then Scrappy Doo is very brave and he's very out there and outgoing, so he's down to take on the bad guys whenever he wants. So that was a huge difference, and you can tell as the show progressed, as the season went on, you get less and less scenes with Daphne and Fred and Velma, and even when we get to the last episode of this season, Season, the 16th episode they're not in it at all it is literally just a scrappy do have meeting new friends he meets new puppies and new dogs that are kind of like street animal dogs like street dogs and they try to help him find Scooby and Shaggy because they get kidnapped some of my favorite episodes and villains in this one is the Scarab Lives, which is a great example. It's the very first episode, and it's a comic book one. And it reminds me of a Goosebumps book, too, when you get later into Goosebumps. If you do read those books, there's a you know a book that has to do with a, like a maniacal kind of superhero, anti-hero type character. And the Scarab kind of looks like that and feels like that character to me when I watch it. Because see, Scrappy-Doo and Scooby and Shaggy know him. He's a popular comic character, but he's trying to turn himself into a villain and yeah that first episode is a really key one that grabs me we also have the neon phantom like at the roller disco episode i believe that's episode four takes place at the hollywood bowl man that's another great one and i love the design of the neon phantom at this point too we still have those really old school designs like i would kind of classify the designs of the monsters in these first few seasons of Scooby-Doo as kind of very much universal type monsters, you know what I mean? An homage to those types of characters. There's also a fun episode called I Left My Neck in San Francisco, which actually has Daphne take a huge back seat and she's sick in this episode, so she doesn't pop up as much. And our main villain character, who is a vampire, I believe, or they think is a vampire, looks a lot like Daphne and it has them thinking that possibly maybe she is the villain. So this one does get creative. This season has a lot of creative episodes and I like I said, it's a big surprise too when you get to that 16th episode and you have Fred, Velma, and Daphne gone, but they don't really explain like where they went. Like did Fred go off to college to learn something? Did Daphne go back home? Did Velma go to college? Like they don't really explain where they went. It just becomes a, you know, a wholly, a 
different show because after that, that last episode, the 16th one, from then on there, it's just Scooby-Doo, Scrappy-Doo, and Shaggy, and that's who you're following. The intro song is funny to this one, too, when we have Scrappy, like, just the intro sequence, and you have, like, it's Scooby-Doo waiting at, like, a train station, and then all of a sudden, like, a package pops off the, off the train, and Scrappy-Doo comes out, and he's like, I'm Scrappy-Doo, and, like, Scooby's like, huh? And then it's like, Scooby, Scooby-Doo, like, and it just kicks in, so it's actually an interesting kind of catchy you know, like earworm type song. And I like the intro to this one. It's one of those ones that's just a fond memory. I really remember this intro a lot. And then you have like the title card sequence and it has Scooby's name and Scrappy's name and the little circle with, you know, Scooby's head in it and then Scrappy next to him kind of like this, you know what I mean? So a lot of this stuff is very familiar. And like I said, this first incarnation of introducing Scrappy-Doo, they didn't stray too far away from the formula. They kept the same premise and the same basis and foundation for the show. They just added a new element in throwing Scrappy-Doo in. But like I said, after this season, they would definitely take a dip in quality because we would start removing characters that we didn't want to have removed. Then we would add in even more characters that we just aren't connected with. And the, short, the episodes too, as we go on, the episodes would get shorter. So instead of having just one mystery and one story for the 30 minute time run, of an episode you would have two stories so they would get split up and they would only be about 12 minutes to 13 minutes each in terms of a runtime and then at that point when you get into a later season they would shrink the running time even more so as you can tell from my perspective scooby-doo and scrappy-doo is definitely the first incarnation of the show or the last like hurrah of this original run of the four first four seasons man because this is where it kind of like the nostalgia, you feel that 70s and 60s, late 60s, early 70s vibe, you know what I mean? They haven't transitioned too much, like I said, yet into the 80s because this one happened in 1979. So this is the last like hurrah of the Scooby-Doo show before they started, like I said, taking a serious dip and they would just start trying new things and new things and they would just completely fail until we got into a certain time where we introduced a pup named Scooby-Doo. So, but we got a few more seasons before we get to that one. That's a very fabulous one. I can't wait to get to that one. But yeah, first we got to talk about some of the dumpster fire seasons. So be sure you're subscribed to the channel because that's going to be very exciting. And this is a fun journey. I hope you're all having fun tackling the Scooby-Doo shows and really talking about them and everything in terms of, like I said, this one, the voice cast, the atmosphere, it feels still like they use the foundation of the Scooby-Doo Where Are You show and then they just threw in a little bit of spice, you know what I mean? Like Scrappy-Doo is kind of like the cayenne pepper, you know, just throw a little bit of spice into your, your dish and it'll, you know, elevate the flavor and that's why this first season is still really good and one that it will be higher up in the rankings once we come down to it. But these are just my thoughts and my opinions on Scooby-Doo and Scrappy-Doo. That means I would love to hear from all of you in the comment section. Was this one that you fondly remember and you remember the episodes and you like had a fun time watching this as a kid or was this one of the shows that you kind of missed? Are you very, you know, not into Scrappy-Doo or mediocre on him? I would love to hear from all of you and discuss down in the comments, but be sure to like, subscribe, and have that notification bell poke so you're notified anytime I post a video. But most importantly, I want you all to have a safe and happy day. Peace out.